Hello guys, welcome to a new series called Researching Resourcenol, where we'll be, like the name suggests, researching interesting reactions involving Resourcenol and its products. In the first episode, we'll be making a beast of a molecule called this, or Calyx for Resourcerine for short. We'll be making it by the condensation of Resourcenol with benzaldehyde. First, weigh out 5.6 grams of Resourcenol. Then we prepare a solution of concentrated hydrochloric acid and ethanol in a 4 to 1 ratio. We need 50 ml of solvent, so that means 10 ml of hydrochloric acid and 40 ml of ethanol. In a second beaker, we measure out 5.3 grams of benzaldehyde. We need a bit of solvent here as well, so we measure out 24 milliliters of ethanol and 6 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. The resourcenol solution got a slight yellow tint. We add a stir bar and dissolve it. After about 20 minutes, all of the resource all went into solution. We add the benzaldehyde solution and after 20 seconds, see a color change to a bright yellow. Ten minutes after the addition, the color went from a bright yellow to a peachy orange. Also, the solution went from clear to cloudy. We turn on heating and set the temperature to 60 degrees. After 30 minutes, the color got even less bright and got a slight greenish tint. It's alright, you're ready for the night of your life Stars will shine so bright, they say we're dancing the stress After one hour, the color went back to a bright, almost fluorescent yellow It's underneath your feet, right now, together we will meet After three hours, quite a bit of ethanol evaporated I did, however, add an extra 15 milliliters Since the volume got even lower than it is now Turn off heating and stirring, cool everything down and filter the solution. We can see it's quite thick and doesn't filter easily. We rinse the beaker with some ethanol and add that to our filtrate. I let it filter and dry overnight. We got a cake of our product that has a distinct green color.
After letting it dry, we weigh it. We got about 10.3 grams out of the theoretical 10.8. That gives us a 95% yield based on resorcinol. Let's do a couple of tests. First of all, one paper stated that it could be recrystallized from ethanol, so we measured out about 10 milliliters of ethanol and added approximately 100 milligrams of our product. It's hard to say if we got some impurities, a suspension or just an opaque solution. I added 10 more milliliters of ethanol but got the same result. In frustration I added an extra 200 milligrams of our product to see if maybe it actually did go into solution and would crystallize out when we cool it. Jump. When I actually did cool it down, it stayed the same, so basically no crystallization. Another paper stated that it is insoluble in water, but after adding a bit to it to some water, not only did it dissolve, it actually made a pinkish peach solution. What about acetone, I hear you ask? Well, it acted similarly to ethanol, but it looked more like a suspension. It was stated that our product should have quite a high melting point of about 300 and something degrees. I set up for a very crude test of heating a piece of aluminium foil with a bit of our product on top. After a couple of minutes of heating, it strangely enough changed color from green to gray and now to a dark brick red color. After about 5 minutes of heating, the color change stopped at a bright red color. If I had to compare it to something, it would be the color of powder chili. Here you can see the drastic change in color. This whole experiment and set of properties left me baffled and confused. The solubilities were literally opposite of what research papers stated. No one mentioned any color of the compound, let alone a color change when heating it up. Why is it green? Who knows. Maybe it has some iron impurities from the technical grade HCL I used. Maybe I formed something completely different. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.